So, well, hello again. It's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the afternoon in October, and it's still too hot, <laughs> but that's okay. I have a strong desire to play, and I have all these little bottles that I have filled up over time with cool stuff. Not necessarily with marbles in them, so we'll give it our best shot. But I have uh, an 18 by 24 inch canvas, and yesterday, although things are never in sequence around here, yesterday I used chain pull for the first time. Not that I haven't used bead pull, a bead pull, however you want to say that. But in any case, I have all those other paints, and I'm feeling like being just sort of crazy. I've got glasses on my head, so I don't have to look for them, and that's a nice thing. And wet rags handy to wipe my hands off, and that's a nice thing. I also have plenty of white paint, and I'm thinking of just putting a big pool down. It used to be before I used these big top bottles that I could just pull the top off easily and pour it out, but it's not as easy as it once was. But that is easily facilitated by my OXO paint spreading, excuse me, I'm my OXO omelet turning spatula that spreads paint magnificently well. I am hoping that I am as zoomed out as I can possibly be for you guys. And I'm going to do my best to try and stay in frame. But um, the camera setup is not ideal. But we do the best we can. And I'm going to try and make a bit of a puddle here because I think it's required to get the best action out of the chain. I don't know how thick the puddle should be because I'm really pretty new at this aspect of doing this. But I think I'm going to spread it out a little more than I have it. The glasses are to help me recognize the difference between canvas and wet paint. My vision is uh, suspect lately. Cataracts are coming my way. If you ever wonder why I, why I work so hard and I do so many paintings, I have a limited time opportunity until I can't do what I'm doing without some kind of eye surgery. So <laughs> cross your fingers for me that it hangs in there for a while longer because I'm enjoying working with you guys and I'm enjoying what I get. I'm not going to worry about all the rest of that canvas because, knowing me, I have squeeze bottles with pre-mixed colors with Floetrol and GAC 800. To keep the thick paint from cracking, GAC 800 by Golden is ideal. I use it religiously. I recommend it totally. It's not for everybody, but it is for me. I've got way more paint than I thought, and I'm watching the, uh, the painting rock back and forth, realizing that the 18 by 24s have a stretcher bar up the back, which is pretty cool. It's something you can hang on to in the middle. So, now, what I'm going to try and do is force myself, that goes in the bucket, throw your paint water in the yard, by the way, or fill a big pot with, uh, with sand or dirt and filter it that way. Yeah, I'm just going to be having a little fun with some nice colors. Maybe I'll leave a little bit, bit of that in there. And I don't have a plan, but I do have chain, and I want to see what happens. And I get to play with both. I thought there was a possibility that I might uh, use a bottle top that I've done before. No, see, the bugs love the white paint. Bye-bye, bug. I want some more paint down here at the bottom now. <laughs> I can see that I wish I had done that. So we'll just do that quickly. And it doesn't matter. Whatever happens is just part of this process. It's all an experiment. I'm hoping for the best, as always, that uh, we get something desirable. And most of the time I do but there are occasions, believe me. But those are just opportunities, really and truly. If you get something you don't like, you can go ahead and go back. I wanna check and see if you can see what I can see. You can go back and use it as a base or a background for something else. Okay, so that chain is kinda of leaking all over everything and needs to be wiped off or not, depending on my attitude. And since I'm just playing, we have a timer set for 20 minutes because the camera will shut off. I just kind of need to know what I can do. And I think I'm going to want a clean piece of chain. 
but I like the drag effect. I might have more paint on there than I need. I have clean pieces of chain and I just put them down and there's one right now. Cool. My idea is that I will see what's happening inside the composition and be able to add more paint or change the marks as I'm making them. Probably flip the canvas around in a minute. Just experiment with all kinds of ways to pull. And both black and white are a catalyst for cells with flow troll. Actually, you know what? I really like this area down here I haven't worked much with. And I'm going to dedicate one of my uh, sweatshirt material cotton rags. And let's see if we can pull some colors out from this little container. That's not squeezing very well. I figure if I don't cover the whole entire canvas, yeah, there's all of 20% left, then um, I have a chance to uh, not have my paint dry out, but that may be not the best rationale. I had a shorter piece of chain and I would really like to have it now. There it is, cool. Hey, everything's falling into place quite nicely. So let's do this and that. And that pull, that connector in the middle is leaving a different kind of a mark, but I guess uh, everything goes right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. When I see something I like to save, I'm just going to try and move in a different direction. And keep right on playing, because I can. Gonna trust my process is gonna be interesting if nothing else. I thought about using this method to make some waves and I think that's a great idea. It's just not gonna be in this particular piece. Cool. So far so good. And keep right on moving toward grabbing some more colors. And as long as they come out without a big burst of flow troll right at the beginning, then that means I've shaken them up pretty well. Ooh, that just makes me want blue. But that is a really nice metallic green. I don't know what we're going to get yet. <laughs> That's for sure. And I have a nice metallic blue. It's dribbling all over everything. I'm not adverse to leaving some some dribbles, some strokes, whatever you want to call them. Where's my claws? I am going to want a little more contrast than I've got so far. I'm not sure I'm being my most interesting self right now because I'm really pretty focused on making this attempt. Just going to keep picking it up part way through something and moving it. This is because I think that is just going to, that white will bury that blue. I'm going to go back and clean my chain again. never know, we might actually wander into this other side and uh, pull some paint there, but if it doesn't cover, I'm going to be in trouble. So let me think about this. While I continue to add some more paint and see what I can do, there is also the uh, 
picking up residue and putting it somewhere else, but I thought I was going to have more than I have, so that's not happening right now. The white paint in the background is very helpful for spreading or allowing the chain to spread. And then I'm getting these big, cool dollops that assumably may... Oh, I got stuff in my way. Oopsie. It's okay. It's still a lot of fun. I'm having fun. We got eight minutes left. I don't know if I'll finish this this time around, but um, I'll give it a shot. And then I'm going to put some... Whoop. That looks like I, what I was expecting, which is a little Floatrol. This paint has been sitting quite a while. I've got beads too, and, and I guess it's not impossible. I mean, all bets are off. I should just be able to be allowed to do whatever I want. I don't know who's making up the extra rules in my head that I'm always fighting against, but uh, they're really not necessary at this point. It's like a much more delicate version of a ring pour with a lot more stuff going on. And you can just change direction beautifully. And it would be especially nice if I would leave my paint colors someplace out of my way. This is just going to wind up looking like one more fabric thing. Well, that's something. I kind of like the, uh, the darkness of that area right there. That's the contrast I wanted. Yeah, I cheated. I went outside the the paint box because I really want to see what's going to happen when I do that. And I'm going to just take that gray and bring it right back down in there and use it as an accent color. And that's kind of cool. Take whatever's still on my chain. See if I can set, spread some of this paint around. See where canvas starts. Yeah, that's where our canvas starts. It's getting harder to see Can't, the difference between canvas and other things all the time. Where's my black? There's my black. So. It's really definitely just all about trial and error. But I can see that there's going to be some more black soon. And I think it might be on this lower corner. I haven't used any gold yet, and I have a strong desire, as I always do. I like the uh, I like when it makes a definition so that it looks like it has some depth to it. I'm going to throw some more colors in there. What have I got? I've got a desire. I wish I had checked my tips. Yeah, that'll still come out very slowly. <laughs> my my chain is sort of setting up paint on it. Get on the right side of that thing. I don't want to fill in everything. I want a little bit of negative space poking through here and there. And okay, so I'm gonna get out my black. Uh, I think I just knocked the marble into the tip. Or I have necessity to splooge. I'm getting no splooge. No splooge, Joy. All right, I'm going to clean my tip because I need this black. Whatever that was needs to go away. It's not. Okay, so 
Back to square one. <laughs> or not. Just grab the uh, spatula that I usually use that was in the bucket. Wipe it off. Try not to leave any water on there to drip on my painting. And spread the best way we can. Maybe less will be more. Maybe I've got white schmutz in there. Maybe I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to have to get the top off that that bottle of black, that squeeze bottle of black paint. I've got three minutes left. I'm not totally impressed, but I'm also not depressed because I'm pretty sure we're going to get something pretty neat out of this once I get to a place where I feel like something is uh, happening. Something good is happening. Back in the bucket with you where you can be handy. And I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do as far as blending those edges go. Right around the inside of the chain, just in case it helps. And I think it does. Drag some of that black right up into the other. Yeah, I see I got a straggler. Oh well. How much orange do I have in here? And will it come out? <laughs> that's another question. I see this in here as something that's a problem. It just looks messy and that's all. It might be a place for some future paint to land. Oh, we got some real built up paint on that. But that's okay. Just going to notice what's going on and give it a best shot. Also, I think I'm going to move some of my paint out of the way. And we are getting to use up some of this paint, which is pretty cool. I'm happy about that. Not as happy about how fast they squeeze out, because they really don't squeeze out very quickly. And my automatic reaction is to throw them right back, throw the taps back on, and that's not cool, because the next time I want it, they're on there again. Now, since I have white paint on there, I'm thinking maybe I can use it as a catalyst, but I'm not seeing that that's the case yet. I am inclined. I don't think that that's the right color combination that I'm thinking about, so I'm just going to move on. I do love the purple and the orange together. I think I'm going to use a little more white where it seems like we're lacking a little. Right in there and right in here and right in there. Oop. What that means is that this is the end of part one and I hope to see you in part two. Shop my Amazon link if you want to at no expense to you and any purchase helps me out it's right below the video as are the description for the painting the recipe for the pouring medium and links to PayPal and Patreon if you're so inclined to help me out those are the places to go um, a little goes a long way I have no other income so thank you for doing that and thank you to all the contributors I've had doing it so far we're so not done with this and we're gonna give it a go again in another minute for however long it takes and uh, I'll see you soon. Oh and check out the wet and, f wet and dry Facebook album. At the bottom of the description there's a link. Just click on it and it'll take you to everything we've ever done. So this is Priscilla in Spring Hill Studio. Excuse me. This is Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard about two-thirds of the way through with a kind of cool